Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm the Blundering Bishop, and together we are modeling, modeling for, for advantage. advantage. Not bad for a first try. So, the Blundering Bishop, mate, that is not a sort of 40k or historical gaming channel, is it? Uh, no, it's the oldest war game. It's a chess channel. <laughs> oldest war game. Some would say Go was older. Uh, well, they might, but the pieces are not as interesting. To exactly. Them. So, you can either have flat tokens or you can have proper chess pieces. Chess men. Chess men. Chess men. Um, and do you go for, how do you feel about red chess men rather uh, than this traditional black and white? Uh, white and red. White and red is I the can way go, to go for black and red sets, that's just confusing. Right. Um, I'll because be doing two evil teams. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll be doing a review of some nice chess pieces I just bought from India. In fact, that right. are they got red and white. In? They do. Mate, I want to see that. All right. They are I will triple put a weighted. Link. No, there. It's all inverted. On my see? face. It's over there, above your head somewhere. Right. Put a link to the blunder ambition. I think I can do that. Thank you very much. To a video. So, uh, Mark. We got a new thing. We do. We uh, we've got a new box. I mean, obviously, we didn't come here to do that. We came to talk about my YouTube channel. But uh, obviously, uh, since we're on, we may as well open this box as well. We should open this box, and the box is the box is for the sports fans at home. Do you want to show them? I do. I'm just reading what it is before <laughs> I tell them. Uh, the box is Black Seas, 1770 to 1830, the Age of Sail battle game, which is from Warlord Games. It's Warlord Games. Yeah, they're doing that thing where they're trying to fill out their ranges, land, sea, and air in various historical periods, fantasy, science fiction, trying to provide a comprehensive package, I think. I I do love the romance of the Age of Sail, I've got to say. Uh, yeah, there's, there's very few things more romantic than scurvy, or <laughs> forced child labor, um, mm. d death by separation. Death by separation, yeah, uh, that as, links in the description to the definition of separation. As, uh, as romantic ages go, there's nothing sexier than a tall ship with but sails. I played old like WRG type Age of Sail rules and they were really not fun to play. And annoyingly, about six months ago, I emailed my old Nav War Metal ships. <laughs> I, I emailed them. I was going to say, honestly, emailed them too. Emailed them too. No, I emailed them. I was like, these have been sign a box for 15, 20 years, I get rid of them. And then this bleeding thing comes yeah. out. Well, the last uh, sale game I played was Man of War. Was Man of War? Classic was the, was GW. The GW one. So I've got two Imperial Wolfships and uh, the original box with no miniatures on my kid's wardrobe. And I took it down, dusted it off today. And Have a look. Had a quick look and realised that, uh, as much as I enjoyed it, it was a terrible game. Was it? Man of War. It was a real... Sorry to the Man of War fans out there. But it wasn't very good. Given the size of our channel, the odds are there isn't a single Man of War fan out there. <laughs> Although they're watching this video, maybe. Uh, yeah, quite. Maybe. Have we... you got a playable Man of War game? Uh, I'm in danger of it, making a dangerous suggestion. Yeah, now. if we sub in other miniatures or card Ooh. tokens, I do have rules, tokens, everything else that you need. But only one fleet. Uh, just fair, not fair to call it a fleet. I've right. got one pair of ships. One pair of ships. Okay. So we could have a ship each. We could have a ship each. All right. But well, let's look at Black Seas. Let's see what we get. This is a starter set. They offer, I think it's about 40 quid, but it contains rules, miniatures, the stuff well, that you need. So let's. Should we crack it open? Let's crack the box open. I've spent the day at work dreaming about new box smell. Dreaming about new box smell. Dreaming about new box and, smell. And plasticated books. Yeah. Mm. Do we know what it is that makes the new box smell? Photographic paper, I think. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. I assume there was a can of it in every gaming shop and they just oh, spray right. it in. Oh, they spray it in. Right, look at that. First video, I got the plastic off competently. Mate, these guys are pro, we need him back. Uh, it's Christmas here. If you're watching this in sort of June or July, uh, we're opening this at Christmas. It came late, too late to feature in the Christmas video. Oh, we yeah. did unwrappings on Christmas Day. Uh, well, I, I would have popped around for that. It would have got me away from the family. Sorry if you're watching. Um, right. This, I've only got the one song, whereas this man was foolish. You had a second go, right? I did. Um, so we're filming this at just past midnight because <laughs> I've only just got them to bed. <coughs> right, here we go. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. Grand unveiling. It was quite a heavy box, wasn't it? It was. There's a weighty manual, and then I'll just give it one of these lovely plastic sprues. Um, <laughs> and there so, appears to be a small bobbin of cotton. Mate, you're going to love Kaiser. That. What's this for? That that is so you can rig your ships, mate. Rig your ships. Is that right. a euphemism? N no. You're gonna put you're gonna put the rat lines between the masts and the sails by tying black thread and super gluing it 
to a one millimeter wide mast. Uh, I, we're gonna have to pause the video while I wind this up. <laughs> I, can't, no, I can't stand I it. I think we should keep the video rolling while you wind now. Right. Okay. So, so let's just see, it's just as a basics. We've got some sprues, six sprues. And continuing the key, the craft theme, I've got what looks like a bag of asbestos fibers. Got some brown asbestos there, some white asbestos. Yeah. Beautiful. Probably the shoddy cut there. Uh, we've got a bag of uh, stickers, flags, ship markers. We've got through this stuff in oh, detail. Oh, some beautiful dice. Are they D10s? I've got some D10s. I've got the tiniest D6 that I think I've ever seen. That's Looks like a cracker D6. That, that does not look and, like something that rolls in. And then, look at that. One of them sinister D3s. A D3 because halving the D6 is too difficult. Mate, it's one of them odd. It's like, oh, well, with the D4, we knew how to work out a D4. I mean, these... Top or bottom? It's got to be top, isn't it? Uh, it's different on the bottom, same on the top. <laughs> it so must be the top. top. Uh, yeah, because some D4s are on the top, aren't they? Now? Are they? Yeah, the newer ones That's are on the top. That's not how you make a D4. It's not how you make a D4. But look at these wheelie D6s. So, uh, one's round and one's square as well. What's that about? <laughs> Top notch. Uh, got some instructions. Very rudimentary instructions. They, they look like instructions only if you actually know what you're doing. <laughs> it's a bit of Ikea. It's just arrows of all the pieces going together. Yeah. Um, with no step by step. To be fair, the sprues look pretty straightforward. Yeah, they do. They? Yeah. All right. What else is in there, man? Whoa. So we've got some high quality paper mats. I'm not going to open it all the way out, but there's the C. There's that, that comes with looks the C. More like the C than my desk here. Yep. Might be using that. Oh, and this if must... the sea is boring. We've also got some islands. Uh, no krakens. I'm disappointed about that. Oh, look at this one. This is a, a sexy collection of tokens. That that is. I mean, at first glance, that looks a bit complicated. No, it'd be fine. But I think these are like arcs of fire and turning circles for different rates of shit. Uh, yeah, and then you got orders maybe. Or, uh, ooh, no. These are upgrades, I think. Upgrades, like sharpshooters, boarding nets. Yeah, these are upgrades. No, not just a regular corker, you've got a master corker. A master corker. So well, if your ship's leaking. A regular one. And then the rule book, weighty. Yeah. So it runs 100 pages, nice and glossy. Got nice pictures in it, models that are painted better than we're going to manage. I assume there isn't a great deal of fluff because the fluff would effectively just be history in this yeah. case. Although, um, if you've ever played Flames of War, they're big on teaching you history in their rule books. Really? Yeah. I don't, well, there's a little bit, nice uh, picture of a sword. Presentation sword presented to Lieutenant James Bowen, who was probably 12 when he enlisted. Mm. Um, you're right, they are. Look, Ark's Fire, beautiful. Arcs fire. Right, so the, movie, the book then, in terms of the presentation, just so you can see, I mean, it is nice, glossy presentation. The rules seem laid out fairly well. And there is, I remember, there is advanced rules. So I think a lot of the stuff about sailing into the wind, there's a simple version and then there's a for grown -ups. So is there a quick start scenario in the front? Because we always love a quick start. We like a bit of a quick start. Uh, no, it's old fashioned. No. It's got definitions at the beginning. <laughs> Terms of reference. It's just a contract, basically. Yeah, it's in the board in action. Ah, uh, so look, some nice... Uh, Playing a campaign. <laughs> some nice action going on, though. But yeah. if you ever get this book and you look at the pictures, they seem to have ruffled their sea mats yes. to make it look like there's actual waves. Yeah. And a nice bit of cloud background. Yes. Oh, photoshopped it. Yeah, well, that too. Oh, that. But that's that's the rule book. There is a there is a scenario number one. I bet that's when you were saying about. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be uh, how to play. Ah, the first so the time. scenarios and then the advanced rules are mixed in with the scenario, so it is scaffolded in that way. You get additional rules as the scenarios go through by the looks of things. Scenario one. Yeah. Scenario Out of two. the fog. That's yeah. like the start of that brilliant film with Russell Crowe, Master and Commander. That I is, love that film. That is a terrible film. It's a brilliant film. What is more historic than an Australian pretending to be English, convincing absolutely nobody and using, you know, a, a 24 gun ship to knock down a massive frigate? What could be more historically accurate than that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, hang on. Yeah, there's something not right here. Yeah, the, one of the great, one of the great tragedies, and and this is one of the things. So there's problems, I think, with the execution of this. But I'm in danger of waffling on too, on too long. You have national characteristics, right? In this, so like British sheets, ships, their gunnery is better. 
or, or something of that nature. And friendships are better at shooting the rigging. Right. And the, and and almost yeah. every game that tries to do this does that. And historically, the French were more inclined to shoot at the rigging and the sails and use chain and bar shot and so forth. So they could board afterwards? No, that's the problem. That was because they were expecting to lose and they wanted to get away. Oh, <laughs> so the, the tactic for the French was to run away more effectively, is that what you're saying? Yes. They're not shooting, they're not in a, in a meeting engagement where they expected to have a chance or win. They probably wouldn't fire at the sails and the rigging. Right. But they were generally, they've had a fleet that's been blockaded in port for five years. All the gunners were nicked by Napoleon to invade Italy and Austria and beyond. They've no idea what they're doing. They haven't sailed for years. And a British fleet that's been at sea for that whole period and trained of an equal or greater force has chased them, caught them. They have to fight. They want to get away. Their objectives are strategic, not tactical. Britain is so anyway in a tabletop scenario where you've got sort of two balanced dish forces that is definitely not what they would do right so hang on is that so you're saying there are like racial traits in here yes national characteristics yeah yeah and that the French is, is effective running away the, the French the French one is about firing at rigging R that's what I said. historically yeah. they did that because of the strategic situation oh, I see not because of the tactical situation not because of cowardice well, well Cowardice insofar as they knew they would lose. <laughs> right. Good. Shall we have a look at the miniatures? It's like, you get on your bicycle, I'll get in my Ferrari and I'll race you to the corner shop. Yeah. And you're expecting to lose, right? And this is true. Yeah. This is true. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, what have you got? Have you got the briefs? I assume I've Should got we have a look the at the briefs first? So, we can each look at these. So, there's three of each of these sets yeah. of sprues. So, there's two briefs on one sprue and two... So my, my first thought looking at this is every single one of those masts is going to get snapped. Not only every single one of those masts is going to get snapped, every single one of those masts is going to be used in building this ship. Yeah. So there is no... Two, two furled sails, masts. Yeah. And you're not going to have one mast furled and one unfurled on no. the same ship. And two open masts to which you add the sails, which are in here, I think. So, but you've got to use all four of those masts. Yeah, so you, there is no tolerance for screwing it There's up. There's no tolerance. There's two bow sprits, and these look like giant belaying pins, but I assume they do something else. What? Yeah. Let's have a look at the instructions. What are those? Which bit? This bit. Oh, it's for the it's for the jib sail. Is it the jib sail at the back? I don't know. You don't know? No. You know, the, the only thing I know about nautical history is the reason the... Um, Admiral wouldn't buy a new hat. And and for the benefit of the viewers and indeed me, why would the Admiral is this is a joke, isn't it? it is might it a be. dirty joke? No, it's not a dirty joke. Okay. Um the Admiral would not buy a new hat because he was wary of capsizing. Oh <laughs> It is sorry, Christmas. sorry. He's, that's a cracker joke, that, I, isn't it? I had like eight beers at lunchtime. It's not usually this bad. And then went back to work. And then went back. No, <laughs> no, no, uh, no. <laughs> I, I, right. as it's unlikely my boss. These is are spurs for holding. All right. So there's a sail at the back. <clears throat> that's this flappy one. The flappy one. Flappy yes. one. Technical. Which has a name, and I forget. Um. So they look like an absolute bugger to paint because... Because? Uh, well, I suppose you could dry brush, but there are no like really nice prominent surfaces in what would be the, the planks to get a decent... I don't know, these look like they'll take a wash rather than a dry because the detailing is not that strong. Yeah. I'd be worried about dry brushing. But if you've seen um, 18th century ships, they, they, they wouldn't have looked they're the best. They're painted. Yeah, that's just They true. are painted with years of paint upon the top of paint. So they probably should look fairly solid colours. Do they, any of them have the naked half ladies on the front? Um, you might find on the frigates that there's... So, so that those are the brakes. So you know you recognise the brakes because they've got two masts, not three. And what do we get? Nine brakes. We get six brakes. Six brakes. Six brakes. Right. And then we've got some, some frigates, or what the game I think calls fifth rate so they're technically i don't think anything the navy ever recognized anything below fourth rate but games need to distinguish between them is this so this is a frigate okay but this only has one deck is that what a frigate would have but it's got a um well it's got a gun deck right not just guns on the deck 
which the brig has got okay. guns on the deck so it's got a deck got below just deck for guns just for guns and that's where you put like the eight year old powder <laughs> to load things yeah yeah and in the bilge obviously which in is the, the bilge. water at the bottom there beautiful yeah. Bilge water, and this oh, this uh, they've got a nice little bit of detailing on the captain's cabin windows yeah, on, at the back. On the cabin windows at the back, which allow you to take an identical model and make it look a little bit different. Yeah. And you've also got your figurines, so you have got figureheads wise. Ooh, I've got a whole, I've got a unicorn. There's a unicorn. There's a there's a Britannia esque looking one. And then just a, just a nice, a nice twirly, little prow, yeah, twirly prow, twirly prow. Lots of anchors on these. Oh, is mine? Ah, oh, speaking of no, no, this has arrived broken. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bit tragic, considering and that's the main sale, isn't it? It's not the biggest. You will need to be careful, women, because these will not be the same size. Well, it, it's ah, uh, yeah, okay. Biggest one goes in the middle. Biggest second the middle. biggest at the front. Right. Third biggest at the back. And really, helpfully, none of the parts are numbered. No letters. Just, no. just take a guess, really. Uh, it's not that hard, is it? Man? Well, you've got to get three things in the right order. I mean, some but days that's some, very hard. You got some a launch, yeah, little and some boats. ships boats, and yeah, they're different sizes. So the big one is there's the jolly boat. I think these are different types well, of why ships. Why is it called boat? the jolly boat? Presumably, if you're getting in it, it's because your ship is sinking. <laughs> Oh, you're on a cutting out party. You're going ashore. Yeah, okay, you're going to different size boats. Going to pillage some villages or something. But those would, would be stored on deck, so again, you can move them around a little bit, paint them different. Give you a bit of design, yeah. Yeah, make and it look I, a little bit. Actually, looking at the I deck of the frigate, broken. I know that's just typical, though, isn't it? Yeah. And um, the deck of the frigate is quite nicely detailed. So you've got a row of a cannons. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, they're probably carronades on the on the on the top deck. Tell us, Kaiser, what carronades are and why they're different from cannons. Well, you know, it's about weight. Okay. Um, not weight. So a carronade is a short barreled cannon. Right. Um, so which uh, is designed for really close work. So the problem isn't the weight of the shot, it's the weight of the cannon itself. Um, and <clears throat> I'm not sure. There's, there's some things can be made out of iron and others have to be made out of bronze because of the me metallurgical requirements. The bigger cannon, I don't think, can be can be made out of iron. Right. Because it's not it's not strong enough. They have to cast them in bronze. So they weigh a ton. And maybe literally, maybe... More. Maybe figuratively. I think probably more. Um, so by having a shorter barrel cannon, which is designed for close-in work, it can fire a much heavier shot. Um, and so carronades are a way of getting your, your frigates and your smaller ships to have some really heavy punch at close range. So they have more firepower, but they have to get next to you to use it. Yes. The sawn-off shotgun of the naval world. Firing solid slugs. But given there are very, very few wooden ships sunk by gunfire wood floats so it was fire presumably that fire potentially you can wreck a ship yeah um but to actually make it break up would usually be happening after the battle because it was trashed and eventually you know over the next few days it'll fall apart so the the plan presumably is to get behind and uh, what's it called rake the bow rake the bow uh, well that would be getting in front I've, the bows at the, front. bows at the front, sterns at the back? Sterns at the back. But as you saw when you're talking about these um, little captain's cabins, you can see the stern is not well armoured. There's no. a couple of it's feet of oak and some on windows. the broad side. There's some windows, yeah. But at the back there's some windows. <laughs> and there's a, just a solid, uh, not solid, there's a completely open deck with just cannons, right. the full length of it, and people. Hundreds of people. These ships have hundreds of men aboard. They are absolutely packed with people, and most of it is gun crew. You only need, on a frigate, you only need maybe 30, 40 men to actually sail the ship. Everybody else is is, is cannon crew and logistics and all of those other things. Because your cannon crew is four or five guys, all working the one gun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I say guys, and, and children. And you as many guns as you can fit on the side. In fact, there you go, got a nice picture in the manual of yeah. a gun being loaded. But they all look very clean, firstly. They do uh, look a little bit clean. <laughs> and they all look in their 30s or 40s, rather mm. than 12. 
I don't think 12 year olds are the mainstay of the Royal Navy so no but they they carried a lot of the powder around below decks they did, didn't they they did yes I don't think they can heave the guns back into position no probably they not they needed men for that conscripts press gangers press well again you know there's a lot of there's a lot of mythology around that kind of stuff being pressed is really gutting obviously obviously and when, when that happens to you you're quite aggrieved but the navy doesn't want pressed men it only takes them if it if it can't crew them it's looking for sailors who are actually good at sailing who can actually sail but as the war goes on the napoleonic war goes on and on the event and the navy gets bigger and bigger and fights on more and more theaters they can't find them the man just wouldn't stay beaten yeah. would he um, and you know a lot of these press men first time they get shot they're off <laughs> especially in somewhere like America or the Caribbean yeah it's like well mate come find me if you want because I yeah. know you've got somewhere to go um, so the they, pressing wasn't that big a deal was it, it it was a deal but you'd be they'd press they'd send press gangs to get 20 crewmen on a ship that's got 800 so the to, biggest, to the biggest had 800 of them? The biggest that have over 1,000, 1,200. And there's one of the things about the ratings of the ships. The ratings of the ships, which is why I was saying about the rating, when they talk about a first-rate ship, it's a first-rate ship of the line of battle. Ship of the line is a short form of line of battle, which becomes battleship. Uh, That's where the term comes from. That. Line of battleship is nice. what they are. Um, and a first-rate ship has a hundred or more guns now actually it might have about 118 because there's plenty of guns on a ship that are not rated mm -hmm. that swivel guns a pair of bow chasers maybe some stern chasers none of those would count it's pierced for 98 it's got 98 or four uh, um gun mountings as established Down the, right yeah in the in the main gun positions it may well have many others see i thought it just meant that's a first rate ship as in that ship's really good right no th but there's a number of other things it means um one of the things is it affects crews in the royal navy which is where these terms come from so if it's over 100 guns it's a first rate ship 100 or more um, and as a result it's going <clears> to have to have a certain establishment of crew it's going to need to have more than one surgeon. It's going to need to have this. It's going to need to have so many it's hundred got a lot of arms to it's, chop off. It's yeah. got a marine major rather than just a marine captain. It's got more than one company of marines. Right. So what you get in the Royal Navy, second rates is something like 90 to 100. I'm not quite sure where that number is, the, the lower end. You have a lot of 98s in the Royal Navy. Why? Because it doesn't attract the same pay requirements of a hundred <laughs> gun ship, and it's very nearly as good. Right. But it doesn't have all of those extra people that a first rate ship would require. Okay, so the civil service actually hasn't changed no, in two hundred years. Like that ninety eight gun ship has got a hundred and eight cannon. Right. But it's a ninety eight gun. But it's ship. got ninety eight guns. Yeah, yeah. Which means it has a vice yeah. admiral. It can have a vice admiral, and it has this, that, and the other. All of those people, and all of those professional people, and a lot of marines. But even a frigate with something like forty guns might have sixty or seventy marines on board under a marine captain, because these. And they're boarding, repelling boarding, uh, like proper redcoats. Yeah, they? but doing the stuff that the soldiers rather than yeah. sailors. Yeah. Um, much much later uh, um, when you get into the, the the more modern period iron warships with turrets often the marines will be responsible for one of the gun turrets but that but in this period no and then they're also not ships police there's a master at arms yeah. and he has some mates and they do discipline the marines are soldiers but you need to understand about a ship we do battle games and you have several ships fighting but these are still big ships for the period this ship when we're not fighting is is <clears throat> um mobile police force yeah they'd largely do, have been on their own wouldn't they yes it, it, the, cr they would be cruising they would be dealing with anti-piracy stuff and so they need a contingent of soldiers they might do rescue operations and relief work much like modern warships do they're about us having a presence but the pirates were better then because then the pirates were cool right now the pirates, the pirates are just were some, cool some geezers in a dinghy with an ak-47 and an rpg and a, yeah and an rpg and a penchant for a rusty, cruise ships yeah, yeah yeah absolutely that's a really tragic story <laughs> it is, isn't um, it We're yeah decline so, of pirates 
So, for, whereas, whereas, so ratings, first, second, third rate. Third rate ships of the line is your kind of 64 to 74, 80 gun ships that, that we built later. Those third rates are really the workhorses of the Navy. Because now you say, oh, that's third rate, as in, that's crap, mate. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Yeah, but Formula 3 is still a heck of a lot faster than your car. Yeah, everything's you know faster I mean? than my car. I've got you know a Zafira. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. Um, shall we crack these tokens, though? Yeah, let's have, we'll have a look at some to... of this stuff. And I'll have a look in this special bag, because you've got a bit waffly there. We did. It's something for you to edit out later, isn't it? Mate, people love the stories, <laughs> don't So, we've got some Punch-Out Islands. Got a, a punch out island. No, look, it's double sided. So you got more of a more of a tropical island, the sort of island you'd want to get stranded on, mm -hmm. and then like a crappy jungle one where you probably get eaten. These ones probably got yeah, cannibals and stuff. Yeah, you definitely don't want to get eaten by cannibals. You, you don't want. And then get, then some beaches. Being and eaten by nice people things. who are not cannibals is just yeah, taking yeah. the mick, mate. Well, <laughs> at some point, you are just cannibals. And then there we got a little dock thing. Um, yeah. Some tokens for when you get hit. Different status effects. So what's the car? What's the? It's decent car stock, is it? Yeah, yeah, pretty thick, pretty well solid. printed. The um, for the islands, it looks like it, they've just done a Google Maps download uh, and, Do and printed it on the car. It on with their sim. But it's decent resolution. It's well made. It feels like they're not going to tear when you punch them out, which is obviously a good sign. You got some sales. Got some sales, and they're not exactly the same, which is quite interesting. The different shades. They are, look at that. Are they paper? Yeah, half, so paper, what I think you card. do with these is you, <clears throat> is you press them between. Right. I think the design, so this is sort of slightly flexible and you press them in between the sail, in between the masts. There are exactly no instructions for what <laughs> to do with the sails. No, but I think stuff like that is in the book. Let's have a look. And then we have got a rat line sheet on clear plastic for you to is this this isn't even cut you have to cut this out with a pair of kitchen scissors and try and make it neat oh lovely so these run up the sides oh yeah there you can see them in the some helpful pictures not of how to put it together but of how it looks once it's been put together by somebody oh, other than and there is a fluff section which you will love a brief guide to tool ships which has got the names of them all and then each type of sail uh, defined for you. So, oh, what was that? What was this? This flappy one at the back. Uh, Latine? No. No, 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 no. Hang on, down here. Ah, <laughs> the poop deck. Yeah. I'm such a child. No, nothing helpful there. No. No. Right. Um. <clears throat> so we get those. We get the sales, and then we've got these some transfers or something they don't think they're transfers and again it doesn't look like they're oh they might be scored they might not no they're not scored these are <clears throat> so these are sales and pennants that's another cut out job is it it's another cut out so you're gonna need to get yourself a, a hobby knife you're not gonna be able to do this with a pair of scissors very neatly no. but we have got obviously royal navy french and dutch and pirates are lovely just in case yeah. um there's a nice section on flogging flogging yeah. in the manual actually didn't i re i recall that the navy limited the number of uh lashes you could apply to 12. no it doesn't say that but in um, the royal navy okay Ah, yeah, there was in fact, so the standard practice was for the ship's company to assemble on the top decks and for the captain to read out the crime. Here's some examples of crimes. Stealing rations, that's a crime. Yeah, mate. Avoiding work, that's a crime. We need a bit more of that. Um, failing to salute. Obviously, Obviously. I went to salute this year. <laughs> um, usually punished by several lashes from the Cat of Nine Tails. So if you were looking for a bit of um, hardcore domination yeah. pornography with your game it's in here so i th i think and i could be mistaken but i think the navy brought in a limit to how many lashes you can apply to a man and i think it was 12 and there was no such limitation in the army and the army literally flogged people to death excellent whereas in the navy it was like mate once you've flogged 12 times the guy <laughs> is passed out yeah he's not getting any... bleeding to death yeah anything beyond that is really quite unnecessary um just looking at the 
the sort of status cards and the upgrades, you get some nice marines, punch out tokens. Look, it's got three marines on it. Oh yeah. Like little toy soldiers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um more <laughs> and uh, more carronades. More carronades than normal. Than I normal, mean. yeah. Just just more carronades. So I think these are upgrades because you so you have these cards and I thought there was little clippy things you put on the outside, but maybe there are tokens in there or maybe we haven't got something well they, they've given us some strings so maybe we have to make our own <laughs> make our own um and this is how you keep track of your hit points and it tells you look you see <clears throat> that this ship has two cannon two light and two heavy cannon on each broadside yep yeah and is this and movement points no these are hit points for you to keep track of right so uh, you've got 10 20 30 40 so in increments of 10 at, at the, the top and then and the digits above yeah, yeah. nice for a large merchant ship and so far so we get a large merchant we get a few of those we get some brigs hopefully six and then there's some frigates so we got merchants and so we do some scenarios where we uh kill some whalers or something yes and there probably was a cardboard whaler i didn't see like one in there. no now you come to mention it neither did i um yeah, but they're not, I mean, they're nice printed cards. Yeah. Overall, everything in here is printed to a very high quality. What you said it was £40? Yeah, I think so. That's a bit of a bargain, to be honest. Yeah. It was definitely less than 40 buying it from Whaling Games. Right. Know, so um, I think it was 40 Now these, if you've not seen them, these. Oh, no, those are the, you remember I said? Oh, they are there. They're the little clips that you put on. The ship. So these wakes you put on these ships and it tells you whether you've got light battle or full sails. Right. And that determines your speed. Uh, and you can only increase or decrease your sail by a certain amount. And you, so what, your movement points are tied to what sails you're at? Yes. A combination of what sail you're at and what class of ship you are. And is there a sort of um, Newtonian physics to the thing where if your speed is 40 and you increase your sail, it's 40 plus something or...? and that that momentum keeps going or no i think it's that this class of ship has a has an 8 16 right 24 that that don't take those numbers but take that because it, it, it's obviously hard with a tank you put the brakes on with a ship you take the sail down and it keeps going yes yes i don't think it's as clever as that right it's a very hard thing to capture in a game yes that's what computer games do that much better <laughs> don't they um but they they do affect and and it also affects uh turning and things like that right. i think your turning circle gets bigger and the number of turns you can make so yeah that's that's those Beautiful. they're nice nice bits of card and i've nice figured out things. this is not in fact a bag of mixed asbestos fibers well, which it, we are not on. it might it might be but that would be an odd thing to for. package so they give you some smoke they give you that yeah for damage fires that's smoke. nice i mean it, you know etc yeah. it, it cost you a pound in a craft store but it's nice they throw it in the box well, you've obviously more not played bolt action. They give them out with every vehicle in bolt Do they? action. Oh, excellent. Yeah, there's a way of just like, you got to leave the model on the table because it's still there. Well, I saw in your, your recent game, smashing Johnny B and then getting smashed by, there was taking the top off the tanks and sticking the smoke in. It makes yeah, quite a nice... It's, it's, it's from that stuff. Nice effect. From uh, bolt action, Warlord Games models do that. Right. We've had a look at this. Um, I'll probably take some stills of this as we're going through yep. so that people can see. So what's the plan, Mark? Because you a, a bit a bit sort of not done any gaming <coughs> for a bit because you've been moving house and stuff, haven't you? Well, no, what I did was pack all my stuff up, uh -huh. put offers in on houses and then decide not to buy them and unpack all my stuff again. <laughs> right. So we, in fact, didn't move house. I just paid for my stuff to be in storage for a few weeks and then took it back out again. Right. Um, we got close to selling our house and buying another one just decided not to bother um so i have packed everything away and in packing it away i lost the love of 40k i have to say yeah. um it, it, it just it. It doesn't grab me kill team you know i've, I've kept yeah. a few miniatures for that everything else is pretty much staying packed away um but love a bit of sale action so love a little bit of sale because we talked about a potential historical game so i reckon what we should do we should split these models up we should take them and 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 aim to get something painted soon i'll let you have the cotton bobbin you can have the first dab but uh, uh, my, my wife has a sewing machine and a <laughs> room literally full of these yeah so that could be like super special rigging cotton but i very much doubt it no no i'll leave that with you you'll leave that with me so we'll split the brigs we'll split up the brigs paint them to a, an extremely those. high standard oh obviously sorry important question who's who who's who 
if I were to have uh, you know an inbuilt opposition to being French would it's that a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feeling that we share yeah I had, in a, that I had a feeling to be honest I can live with being French as long as we can play the whole battle with the Marseillaise on loop <laughs> so do you want to be Spanish then oh have we got options I thought it was f- well they're the same but I didn't know if they're giving us flag options and things oh I think, I think we've got France and England or France and Great Britain yes yeah afraid so me that is well you can take the British ones no no I'll, uh, je m'appelle France I'm not you're not putting the Marseillaise <laughs> on loop me you're driving me to the stretch and my do, grandfather do, do, would do, never do, forgive do, me alright I'll be French and not play the Marseillaise on loop I'll just play it five times you're alright you're alright being the cheese eating the yeah, monkey yeah, yeah come on hand it over yeah hey alright next time you see Mark on the channel may or may not be months from now if um, we we can't pay three ships each in a relatively rapid time then we're doing something wrong there's too many times I've sat down in front of a camera with somebody <laughs> and this conversation it's Christmas when we have this conversation let's see when we get back on the table thank you for watching Please remember to like, comment, share or subscribe this video. And if you are buying new games or new miniatures, please consider following our affiliate link to Wayland Games. It gives us a little bit of kickback and helps fund other projects for the channel. Thank you for watching.